Hey y'all, Noons here from Banana Hobby and welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. And today's video is part two of the assembly of the MiG-17 turbine. If you guys haven't seen part one, I'll put the link down in the disco. Today, we're gonna be finishing the rear end. We're gonna be installing the turbine. I'm gonna line up my thrust tube a little bit and show you how I do that and how I eyeball it from the back. And then we just gotta Fill her up, make sure she's got no leaks, and make some noise. So we're going to be doing that in today's video, and then we're just going to do some final touches. So come along from the journey. Welcome back, y'all. So here's our engine compartment. We don't have anything on the engine bolted in. This is just me scheming. As you can see here on the tailpipe, it's not exactly centered. It's pushed a little more this way. So that's something that we'll address. We're gonna be mo moving it roughly about two millimeters that way to get it completely centered. But back to the turbine. So from the back of the cone, from the rear of the turbine, let me get this thing out. Or from right here, the spacing, I get a lot of people asking me about the spacing. So the good rule of thumb on your turbines is half inch to three quarters inch from where the bell meets the throat. Now where is where the bell meets the throat? This right here everybody is called the bell because it looks like a little bell if you had a thing over here and you went ding 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 ding. And this right here is the throat or where they say the mouth of the pipe is. I say the throat because you can say the mouth of the pipe is right here since this is where you feed it, right? So bell <clears throat> the throat and your pipe so from right here to here a half inch to three quarters inch you want the end of the cone of the turbine for the best efficiency and to get your Viteri effect to get the air from out here pulling to get it in through here because what you'll end up happening is you'll get more suction through here you have burning gases. The cold gases that come here will expand and it gives you a little bit more efficiency and it helps with the ventilation of the system. Now, as you can see right here on my tailpipe for illustration purposes, I have a half inch mark and a three quarter inch mark from the throat of the pipe. And I know the end of my cone to this back plate. So the, from the back plate to the end of my cone of my turbine, it's three quarters of an inch exactly. I use this little spacer, it's just a piece of uh, tissue paper Kleenex. And this is how I gauge where my turbine sits. So I know from here to here is three quarters of an inch. So let's say I want to set it at the minimum of a half inch. I would be about right there. And that is at the minimum. Now I have a lot of space up here. And this is a lot of weight when you're in a turbine. This is a majority of your weight, guys. So you have to take that into account. The farther back you move this, the more you're gonna have to move your batteries and your electronics to give it nose weight to counteract. So for me, I like to go to around the three quarter inch rule. It gives me plenty of spacing. And it moves my weight a little more up, which will help. So I would be right at about right there and as you can see my starter motor is right by where the spar is that's a little too close that isn't too close like there's going to be a problem just a preference thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to split the difference so i'm going to move this to right here and i'm going to call it right there now obviously it's not centered the turbine's going to come down a little more but I'm going to say right about right there. So now at this point, I feel pretty good where I'm at. Now when I put this on a Zykoi CG machine, I'm going to see if I have to add ballast. If I'm just off way too much, if I have to move this just a little bit, it won't really affect it that much. But since the CG of this jet is right by where the spar is, this right here moving back and front will have a dramatic effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew my two screws that are holding in my thrust tube. I'm going to center her out. I'm going to repilot new holes, screw her in, 
and I'm going to put in and install my turbine and we'll be right back. A few moments later. We're back everybody. Went ahead and installed without a hitch. These small turbines, they only need one screw on each side to hold them in. I do all four because that's just me. As far as the thrust tube, I only had to go that way one more millimeter. I thought I had to go about two or three. But the bell right here, it's not completely round. It's just off shape by a little bit. So I went off of the throat, went one millimeter. I got the picture right up there. I got it lined up as good as I can. We have our gap uh, spacing right here set at five eighths. I split between half inch and three quarters. Plenty of room in the front. I have this really long wire that I'm going to have to go ahead and coil up and feed. But pretty much the turbine she is installed and ready to go next step we're going to fill up the uat in the tank with fuel and see if she leaks after a static test welcome back everybody like i was saying before we're going to do what i call a static fuel fill test and what that consists of is filling up the uat checking for some leaks then filling up the main tank as well let it sit here and see if anything comes out of our hoses. This is just to make sure we don't have any small leaks that will create drastic leaks when we get pressurized with the fuel pump for the turbine. So we already have it fueled up. I've been checking around the seals, all the tubes, make sure it's dry. I'm going to come back and check it about every 5-10 minutes for about 30 minutes. It's just my preference. Make sure no fuel's leaking. Once we verify that we have no leaks on our static test, we'll move on to firing up the turbine, get this thing under pressure. To give you guys a closer shot of what I'm doing, here's the fuel can. I make these for a fraction of the cost of what you can get them new. I got it hooked up right here. We got fuel in the main tank and the UAT. I have the floorboard out because I have this plumbed in right here, that loop, so I can't take it out. Check it for leaks on the UAT. Checking for leaks uh, around the fitting right there for the main tank. Get you guys to see that. And around everything that I safety wired. Like I said, about 5-10 minutes for about 30 minutes. Once we know that's good, we're going to call it okay. Alright everybody, the static fuel test was an easy pass. It's getting late, so we're going to go ahead and pack up for the night and pick up in the morning. See you then. Welcome back everybody. We're in the backyard and we're about to test fire the turbine for the MiG-17. Now I know the K-45 works. I've had it in other planes. What I mean about test fire, this is a new fuel system, different length hose, different UAT, different restriction. So what we're going to do is we're going to purge the system of air, fill it up with fuel, and then we're going to adjust our pump voltage to our fuel system. Now if you don't know the importance of the pump voltage to the system that you have, while I get this set up, let's go ahead and learn something. Okay, everybody, what is pump voltage and how do you use it and how does it affect you? Now, very few things on the turbine that you can control. Everything else is controlled by the turbine or the ECU. One of the things you can control is pump voltage. Now, what is pump voltage? Pump voltage is exactly that. It's the voltage that's sent to your pump on startup. Now, your fuel pump, the more voltage, the more fuel it uh, throws out. The less voltage, the less fuel. Now, on startup, you don't want a lot of fuel. You want it to be at a tempo of drip, 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 drip. Now, anything more than that, you're going to be pumping a lot of fuel on startup while it's preheating the chamber, and the fuel could be sitting at the bottom of the chamber. Then when it goes up to, to ramp up and it starts up with the RPMs, it throws that fuel out the back of your turbine, causing a big old fireball and burning stuff down. So one way to mitigate that is to adjust pump voltage. Now, why do we do this? Well... Every turbine is different. Some turbines are using a stone filter, a bag filter. Some are using six millimeter lines. Some are using four millimeter line. Some are having five, 10 feet of fuel tubing. Some have three. Now let's just say you have the same pump voltage across and you have a small system with a bag UAT. It will throw a lot of fuel out and you will get a fireball as in the previous videos of my King Tech K45. Now, let's just say you have a longer system with the same pump voltage. You're not going to get any fuel getting out of that system because it's just too much pressure for it to overcome and you're going to get failed to starts. So, 
Please check your pump voltage and you'll get your turbine running great. Another thing, please stop using your turbines as test stands. If you put in your turbine in your plane and you test it and you burn it down, the fault's yours. Once again, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned. In the next video, we're going to do our control surfaces, our setup, and most importantly, CG. And if you like this plane, you can go ahead and find it at the link down in the description. Thank you all again for watching. Noon's out.